What's up, Titans fans? It's your boy CD back again with another episode of Titan Up Today. Today is Thursday. Thursday night football is going to be kicking off in Jacksonville later tonight. But first, before we do that, we're going to preview our matchup against the Minnesota Vikings as we travel all the way north to take on this team that's 0-2 as we are 2-0. But no need to delay. Let's get right down to it. All right, so before we get into the preview, I want to take a moment to apologize to you, Tony Brooks. I did go ahead and watch the coach's view, and you were 100% correct. Clowney was definitely offsides. It was not called, and I would say that that Miles Jack pass interference call, the man was just playing really good smothering defense. You can actually see Ferkser start to stumble right before the ball is coming in, so it looked way worse than it was. That said, we still win. We still get to keep this, the second win of the season. You guys have to take that loss and move forward. Good luck in the future. Now, week three is here. You guys get to play tonight. We will be playing on Sunday as we travel to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. Kickoff is at 1 p.m. East Coast, 12 Central Time. So let's jump into it. I've had a chance to watch the Vikings play both their matches matchups. Last week was really sloppy whenever you looked at it and whole. They did lose to the Colts. I thought that they would go in and win after having a basically a shootout with the Packers. They did not, and they looked real sloppy. So at first, you look at the, the numbers, you look at the box score, you say, man, what happened here, man? Kirk Cousins is horrible. These guys can't move the ball on offense, can't stop anybody on defense. But definitely when you put eyes to film, it does not say the same thing. So let's jump straight in. We'll start off with the total offense of both our offense and their defense. Look at the Titans' total offense. You can see 24.5 points per game is what we're scoring. 365.5 total yards per game. 49 first downs per game. Keeping that ball is definitely our game plan. That ties us for 11th in the league. 51.9% third down conversion is 7th in the league. One for one on fourth down. Obviously, it's only one attempt, but we did make it. It's tying us for first in the NFL. 67 penalty yards has us ninth in the league and zero giveaways ties us for first place as there's only a handful of teams that have not turned the ball over this season. We are one of them. Now, the Minnesota Vikings defense is not good at all in the statistical categories that we look at. 35.5 points per game. That's 35.5 points per game. It's 31st in the NFL. They're also on the field a lot. Um, 143 total plays thus far, which is an average of 70 plus plays a game on defense. It's 29th in the NFL. 438 yards per game. Total yards that they're giving up puts them 29th overall. 55 first downs is tied for 30th overall. The third down conversion percentage on defense is actually decent as they're 40.9, almost 41%, has them 11th in the NFL. Two for three on fourth down conversions they're giving up. Puts them in the middle of the pack. 156 penalty yards is 29th in the league. The discipline has been an issue for them. And only one takeaway this season has them tied for 25th. So looking at the Vikings' defensive statistics, it doesn't look impressive at all. Watching them on film, on the other hand, they're extremely fast. They're running all over the field to get to the ball. Very aggressive unit. That said, that aggressiveness is giving up a lot of yardage. And obviously, in the statistical categories here, it does not bode well for them. I would say that they look almost like a um, what you would call a bend but don't break defense. That bend but don't break defense kind of showed its head early in the season. I'm sorry, early in the game against the Colts. The first drive of the game, the Colts drive down pretty easy. They get to the red zone. Harrison Smith makes a good defensive play, pops the ball up, they get an interception, they get the ball to start moving forward. Now, Bimba don't break works sometimes, but you have to put up offensive points to kind of counteract that. They obviously were not putting up any offensive points, as we know. But from a defensive standpoint, I think that there are some holes that we could take advantage of that the Titans are really good at that they might not be as good as. At defending so let's go ahead and look at the rushing offense and see what our rush squad looks like against their Russian defense 
Our rushing offense, as you can see here, we have 68 attempts on the year, ties us for third. We are able to run the ball basically whenever we want to, which is really good. The yardage though is almost there, but not too much there. We got 126.5 yards per carry. It puts us towards the top third of the league and has us at 13. The problem with our run game right now, honestly, is finishing. There's zero explosive plays. Those Derrick Henry 50 yard runs at the end of the game. In the last two games, we have not seen it. That said as well, when we're in the red zone, there have been zero touchdowns for the Tennessee Titans on the ground this year. The Titans like to run the ball. It's what we do. We run the ball and we're doing that a lot, as you can see with the 68 attempts, but we are not finishing and we're not being explosive in those runs, which is kind of scary. Now, the Vikings defense has had to put up with the fourth most rushing attempts against them as 72 attempts have been run up against the Vikings defense this year. They are giving up 154.5 yards per game, which is 28th in the league. This might be the game in which we can run and pound that ball inside with Derrick Henry and get the yards that we have not been getting. The average is well 4.3 yards per carry um, with 13th in the NFL right now. The problem with us getting off that zero rushing touchdown stat line is at this point in time, the Vikings rush defense is giving up two touchdowns in two games, which makes them tied for 10th in the NFL. Now, our rushing stats aren't exactly what we want, or I don't say what we want, but what we expected after last year's playoff run, going all the way to the AFC Championship, using that running game as our tool, our hammer um, in our toolbox to get us all the way there. Who was our hammer? Derrick Henry, number 22, pound 22. That's always been my plan. This year has been a lot more of Ryan Tannehill. But anyways, Derrick Henry on the season has 56 carries, which is still first in the league. 200 yards, second in the league. Obviously, that average is not there as it's 3.6 yards per carry. Still goose egg in the touchdown category. My bull prediction was wrong again, but we will talk about that on Saturday. So anyways, who's going to be trying to tackle Derrick Henry? Obviously, they're going to have 11 guys trying to tackle him throughout the game, but the Vikings have a defender in the linebacking core that is extremely aggressive and is all over flying to the ball on every single play. That's Eric Hendricks. Right now, he has 23 tackles, which is tied for third in the league. And number one, first place with 18 solo tackles in the NFL at this point in time. He has zero sacks, but he's got two tackles for a loss. Now, at first glance, you would think Eric Hendricks is going to be a problem for us. Now, I would say the way we've been playing, we could actually use his aggressive nature being in the top in the NFL at tackles and use it against him. How do we do that? With the play action pass. Now, the play action pass where has been working for us all season long thus far, but I think it's going to work for us even more this week. And this is how, as you see here, the pass offense for the Tennessee Titans we're averaging 33.5 attempts per game, which is 20th, which is towards the bottom, or towards, let's say more like in the middle, towards the bottom of the league. But we're able to do what we want to whenever we're doing it. We're being very efficient. So 239 yards per game. Again, 20th, sim similar to the pass attempts as we're still in the middle towards the bottom. Only four explosive plays, which is tied for 27th in the league. We definitely are missing A.J. Brown from that perspective. Two sacks allowed has us tied for third. We're protecting our QB, which is an issue for us to start last season. Hence why Marcus Mariota is no longer on our roster. Now, the passing defense for the Vikings, as I was telling you earlier, there's some holes, significant holes. As you can see here, everything is in the 20s, except for interceptions, which they have one, but... 283.5 yards per game has him 28th. 73.9 completion percentage is absolutely absurd for a defense to give up three quarters of the pass attempts for completions. That's absolutely crazy. And I think an accurate Ryan Tannehill will be able to take advantage of that easily this week. So 8.4 yards per attempt. Let's go ahead and put that again into perspective. 8.4 yards per attempt. That means that whenever a quarterback is just dropping back just to throw the ball, he might complete it, he might not. 8.4 yards per attempt. That is 
crazy to even think about how big that number is. It's almost a first down every time you go to pass the ball. We must just drop back and pass every play as they're going to basically give us a first down every two plays, and it should be no problem. But obviously we want to stay balanced, and we'll get to that game plan moving forward. But 8.4 yards per attempt has him 26 in the league, five touchdowns through the air. Ryan Tannehill already has six, I believe, right now, and I think that this is something that we can continue going on as he's now nine straight games with multiple touchdown passes the highest streak right now in the nfl and i think that's, that might continue moving forward right now this week so the five touchdowns has been tied for 25th and one interception tied for 16th in the middle of the pack not too impressive to be fair 116.7 quarterback rating is 29th in the lead these guys are almost last in every statistical category in the passing game they've only gotten two sacks on the year 24th and given up nine explosive plays through the air as you look over to your left of the screen you see we only have four on the year we're towards the bottom this is the week for us to stretch the field use Corey davis if we're if aj brown's not available or khalif raymond who was nowhere to be found last week by the way get down the field stretch them these guys are hurting there's one guy that they're missing from last year xavier rhodes is nowhere because he's gone this team has an issue in the passing game, as you can see here. So how do we attack this Minnesota Vikings subpar pass defense? Simply put, you take out an efficient, very accurate, strong arm quarterback, and you name him Ryan Tannehill, give him the number 17 on his jersey, and throw him out there on the field. Number 17 thus far has been lights out, picking up where he left off last year. We almost had the 16-game sample to see what an NFL season would look like if he played all 16 games right now he's 120.7 quarterback rating is fourth in the nfl 70.1 percent completion percentage is ninth in the nfl with 488 yards six touchdowns has him tied for eighth in the nfl but the biggest stat that i love is that goose egg zero interceptions on the nfl season thus far in two weeks it will go out there to the vikings and hopefully lead with zero interceptions again that said who we have to throw to Corey Davis, our number one wide receiver, as I told you guys preseason, there was no preseason, but before the season started, as well as week one and week two, he is the number one guy for us at wide receiver. 10 receptions thus far, has him number one on our squad, 137 yards receiving, again, number one on our squad, 13.7 yards average, one touchdown and two explosive plays thus far. I think that the two explosive plays, he can double that this week against this, this Vikings defense, but we will see who's our second receiving option, we'll call it that, because he's not a wide receiver. He's our tight end, John New Smith. John New Smith thus far has eight receptions, 120 yards, 15 yards per clip. Every time he has it in his hands, he had a 60-yard reception last week to open up the, the game against the Jaguars. He also has three receiving touchdowns right now as a tight end. He is or not he just has a tight end as a receiver in general. He is tied for second in the NFL with those three touchdowns. And he also has two explosive plays, just like Corey Davis. So the Vikings have an opportunity, even though the statistics say 28th and 26th and 30th in every defensive or pass defensive category, they'll tote out a pass rusher, Yannick Ndakwe. I'm sorry, Ngakwe. The man is a beast. That said, Statistically, this year, he's been kind of quiet. Three tackles, two of them solos, only one sack out of the two games, two tackles for a loss. On the backside, they have that guy that we all know. Number 22, Harrison Smith, nine tackles, eight of them solo tackles, no interceptions, and I like to keep it that way. He does have one pass defended and a half of a tackle for a loss this season. Now, that is what their backside looks, and although the names look good on defense, to stop our pass offense, again, those statistics look very, very weak. The angle that we need to attack these guys, I believe, is simple. We have number 22 in the back. Start off with a little bit of run and then play action, play action, play action. Get Eric Henricks and get Harrison Smith, who always seems to be up towards the front of the line or by the line of scrimmage. Have them play the run first and then pew, over the top. I think that's probably why they give up so many explosive plays thus far this season. Now, Let's jump in because they have the opportunity as well to have the ball. So what do they look like with their team and their offense?
So the Minnesota Vikings team offense, they're 20th right now in the NFL with points per game, averaging 22.5 points. 278.5 total yards per game on offense is 30th in the NFL, and they're running 48 plays per game, which is dead last so they barely have the ball and then when they do have the ball they're not doing much with it they have 37 first downs tied for 29th this is probably the reason why they only have 48 plays because if you're not getting first downs you're not able to continue to control the clock and have the ball on offense their negative three turnover differential is tied for 30th in the league they've given the ball away four times which is 27th in the league one-third of their attempts on third down is converted, which is tied for 29th in the league, 0 for 1 on fourth down, tied them for 25th. 65 offensive penalty yards is 8th. So there's a positive out of all that garbage on their offense that you can say that they're at least being disciplined as they're not doing anything with the ball. Now, our Titans defense will be put out there to stop this mediocre Vikings offense, but we have ourselves been pretty mediocre thus far on defense. I hate to say that because Mike Vrabel being a defensive mind, our defensive side of the ball, we've always been stout, historically speaking. But right now, something is not right. And it's only been two games, but there's been too many times where we're giving up big plays and just not getting off the field. But I'll show you the statistics here. 22 points per game is 12th in the league. 401 yards per game is 25th. We're giving up 49 first downs per game, which is in the middle of the pack. 56.5% on third down is almost dead last with 31st in the league. 116 penalty yards, again, towards the bottom, middle towards the bottom. Plus three turnover differential is the only reason why our defense has been staying alive. We've been living and we will die by the turnover if we do not get the turnover. But we have three takeaways. And again, the offense not giving the ball up is allowing us to win these games on defense. And those three takeaways have us tied for seventh. So with that Titans defense not playing as tough as we should, we will talk about the Vikings rush offense. The Vikings rush offense at this point, they have 40 attempts, which is 30th in the league, and they're getting only 107 yards per game, which is in the middle towards the bottom of the league. Three touchdowns on the ground is actually top 10 and one explosive play. Obviously, it's not much going on, but it's tied for 13th in the league our rush defense huh 136 yards per game 23rd again it's nothing special at all we're giving up 5.1 yards per carry that is too many yards you have to stop the rush last week james robinson killed us on the ground and only a mere 16 plays really put a damper on our defense tied us right now with that 5.1 yards per carry it ties for 28th in the league We've only had the ball rushed on us 26 times all season long, giving up two touchdowns, which is tied for 13th, and two explosive rushes tied us for 20th. We need to tighten up on defense. So the Vikings will tote out one of the most athletic and talented running backs in the league in Davin Cook. The FSU alum right now is already carried the ball 26 times for 113 yards, 4.3 yards average per carry is is good. Anything above four is is good. You start to get up at five, that's where you really want to be at. But 4.3 is definitely a good number, although it sits about average in the league right now. He does have three touchdowns, which ties him for third. And it's our job on defense to stop that. I was hoping that Rashad Evans, after having the ejection after week one, would show up. He played well, yeah, but the man on defense at our linebacking court right now is Jayon Brown. Jayon Brown thus far has 12 tackles, five of them for solos, zero sacks, and two tackles for a loss. We will need to be smart, contained, because he's a one-cut kind of guy, but if he gets outside, he can beat you. Davin Cook is nasty. I think that with our front, five guys up front, especially with Jack Crawford and um, Jadavian Clowney and Jeffrey Simmons, those guys in the middle clogging it down. I think Dalvin Cook's best option is to get outside if it swings, um, tosses to the right, left, pitches. Um, but we have to make sure that we contain him and Jalen Brown. It would be his job running all over the field to do so. Now, the Vikings' pass offense is a little bit all over the place. 
25 and a half attempts per game is almost last. 186 yards per game is dead last in the NFL, but they have seven explosive plays, which has them in 11th, and they've only given up five sacks all season, tying them for 18th. Now, I want you to think about this. I watched this game against the Colts. The Vikings passing. Obviously, Kirk Cousins doesn't look phenomenal at all in the stat sheet. On the, on the box score, it just doesn't look good, but when you watch the game, there was a lot of passes where he threw good passes to the wide receivers who were open on time, and they just dropped it. I'm talking about bad drops, and it looks bad in his stats because it's an incompletion. His percentage goes down. His yards goes down. All that stuff looks bad on him, but he didn't play nearly as bad. Now, I'm not letting him off the hook because as I was watching that game as well, there were some passes that you would think, what are you doing? He threw in a triple coverage for an interception um, early in the game, and he just sometimes looked like he's a little bit rattled. He gave up a safety as well early in the game. He doesn't look good. The offensive pass, passing attack for the Vikings does not look good at this point in time, and hopefully getting home against us is not going to straighten that out for them. But our pass defense, we get to play and go against them and hopefully get to feast on this very, very soft pass offense of the Vikings thus far. We're giving up 265 and a half yards per game, which is 22nd in the league. Two thirds of all pass attempts have been completed, which put us tied for 17th in the league. We're giving up 7.1 yards per carry ourselves, which is in the middle of the road. Four touchdowns, Middle of the road, two interceptions at this point is good. Puts us tied for fifth in the league. 93.7 quarterback rating is 14th and two sacks. That's it. Just two has us tied for 24th in the league. All right, so this Vikings pass attack will be led, led, if you can call it that, by Kirk Cousins. It's, it's abysmal. It's just really, really bad all the way around. Statistically speaking, you see 61.9 quarterback rating is last. Now I want to put that in the context. You say last, right? There's 32 teams in the NFL. So you'd be 32nd in the NFL. You'd be last, right? No. In this situation, Jeff Driscoll is statistically able to fall into this category as well as Justin Herbert, who got to start for the Chargers last week. And he is last in quarterback rating. So really he's 34th in the NFL out of 32 teams. It's sad to say. 58.8% um, completion percentage has him 29th, 372 yards per, I'm sorry, overall, not even per game, 372 overall is 30th, two touchdowns on the season. He's averaging only a touchdown a game, and most of that is in garbage time. Four interceptions, that's average of two interceptions per game. He is last in the NFL with four interceptions. That's sad, but I think that our defense can help him keep that record going on with two more interceptions this week to put him at six but we will see again he, he it looks bad in the statistical categories but that quarterback rating as well as completion percentage and yardage comes down whenever your wide receivers are dropping the ball now one of his wide receivers that doesn't tend to drop the ball at all and is really good athletic adam thielen adam thielen has nine receptions 141 yards 15.7 yards per catch and two touchdowns which ties him for fifth all this season he's doing well but our defense again up and down against the pass we give up a lot of yardage a lot of touchdowns against Gardner Minshew and those boys of the Jacksonville Jaguars last week Harold Landry had a ball he stole the interception but statistically nine tackles six solo tackles zero sacks but one tackle for a loss he's been putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback I think that he is due to get home and Bryant to bring down Kirk Cousins. I think he's due for that. On the back end, Kevin Byard has been kind of quiet, waiting for him to jump out there and get that interception. He's been around the ball, but hasn't grabbed and brought it in. This is a guy who had five interceptions last, last year and eight the year before. I think that he's it's time for him to just catch Kirk Cousins slipping up and take one back. But we'll see. Kevin Byer right now, 12 tackles, 10 of them are solos, zero interceptions, but one pass defended and one tackle for a loss thus far. Special teams is a third portion of the game. Obviously, 50% field goal percent is never good. 30th right now in the league, but we're not last. We were last last week with a 25% field goal made percentage. That's just not good. But anyways, one field goal block 
we're still tied for last. There was no field goal blocks last week, so we're still tied for last with those Bucks and Ryan suck up. Our punting is top tier as always. Again, we have the best punter in the league lining up with us. He's 51, punt average is fifth, 44.3. Net average is tied for eighth, five punts inside the 20 ties him for third. Now on the other hand, kickoff return yardage has been very quiet for the Titans. We haven't been getting much out of Khalif Raymond thus far. We're averaging 14.6 yards per kick return. Just keep that in mind that if we take a touchback in the end zone, it comes out to the 25 yard line. So at this point, 14.6 yards of kick return average means that if we're catching the ball on the one yard line, we're only getting to about the 15. This is not a good look at all. So we need to definitely get those numbers and pump those numbers up in the kick return game. The Minnesota Vikings are perfect when kicking field goals, tying them for first place. But they've only taken two field goal attempts, and they made both of them, but that ties it for 27th. Obviously, that offense is having issues scoring touchdowns, but they're not even able to get close enough to kick a field goal. That's pretty sad. The 34.7 net punt average is last in the NFL. Maybe we can actually get a good punt return from Khalif Raymond. We'll see. But one punt inside the 20 is 26 in the league. All right, breaking down this matchup now after we've seen all the numbers. It's pretty simple to me that our pass offense versus their pass defense, we win this matchup. The reason why, one, no Xavier Rhodes, and two, the play action pass game. Kendricks at linebacker is going to be aggressive, especially with number 22 in the back. They're going to be thinking that we're going to run the ball 25, 30 times a game, and they have to get to Derrick Henry before he gets started. This is going to allow us to put in his gut, pull back, and throw it quick. Harrison Smith, again, always seems to be towards the line of scrimmage. He's a very, very good safety. But if you're towards the line of scrimmage, it opens up the backside for our fast guys. Khalif Raymond, I'd like to see him have a good game this week, a big game. But Corey Davis even still, now that the hamstring seems to be good, he can stretch the field as well, so don't be afraid to use him. The passing attack versus their pass defense, we win that. Now, in the rushing game, we have been average where it's a lot of volume right number one in carries but the yardage and the yards per average is just not there i think that this is going to be another tough game but when we get into the red zone because we'll have those opportunities i think that's whenever we get back to pounding the ball and we have to get in the end zone with derrick henry number 22 has to get a touchdown this week to get that confidence going and know that we can run the ball inside the red zone not just pass now Flipping it around, the Minnesota Vikings pass offense against us, I don't think it's really even a thing. It's going to be interesting. I think there's going to be some opportunities for them. And if they catch the ball, it could be really bad for us because we have been giving up a high completion percentage as well as a, a low, I'm sorry, a high um, third down conversion rate. This is not good. But we could turn it around. I'd like to see some sacks on the other side. I think this is the matchup that's kind of hit or miss. We can go either way. The Vikings could throw for 400 yards or they could throw for 150 and four interceptions. But we'll see. This is going to be a turning point for us as well as the Vikings in this ball game. Now them running the ball, I think I see a stalemate here. We give up explosive plays from time to time with a couple, but if we tie that down, we can keep Dalvin Cook bottled up. He goes nowhere. Alexander Madison, we didn't talk about him earlier, but the backup running back He's good as well, so if Cook is not in there, they still have another threat. And Cook as well can catch the ball out the backfield, so we have to look out for that. We have to stop, make tackles, Jeffrey Simmons on the inside, holding stuff down, but also containing on the edges with Landry and Clowney, making sure that Dalvin Cook doesn't bounce anything out and make tackles. I think we can do well in this rush defense against their rush offense, but again, one of the situations where our defense has been playing a little bit all over the place, and I can't call it. So this is the opportunities for them to, to put a little bit of pressure on us, but our offense should have the weapons to go right back at them. So this could be something as simple as, a, you know, a real tough, hard-nosed game and low scoring, but I have a feeling this could be a high-scoring game moving forward, almost to the level of a shootout, similar to what we just did with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I don't like that. But we'll talk about that more with the game predictions on Saturday. Now, their pass offense, we know this, they don't look good. They don't look good. We can, we have the opportunity to do something. On our pass offense, we look really good. Our rush offense, same thing, really good. So 
We have an opportunity to really do something big and put up a ton of points. I like to see Ryan Tannehill throw the ball more. Just keep throwing the ball, keep throwing the ball, play action pass. We do some damage to this Minnesota Vikings, and I think that we could go 3 0. But tonight is Thursday. Thursday night football, week three, officially kicks off. It's going to be Miami Dolphins traveling to Jacksonville. It's a long plane ride. I actually don't even know if they'll take a plane. They might bust it up there. It's right at the I-75, but it's going to be a good game between two guys or two teams that are just coming off losses, tough losses to say the least, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. But we, low-key, will be cheering for those Miami Dolphins that go ahead and kick the Jaguars down the standings just a little bit more, but the Jaguars do get to play at home, and we will be bringing you guys those picks. Let me pop it up right here. The graphic, me, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars winning this game 17 to 13. I think it's going to be a little bit sloppy of a game, but they do win this game. Well, that concludes today's show. Join me tomorrow as I bring you the conclusion of Thursday's practice combined with Friday's practice. We'll give you that injury report right before Saturday's predictions to make sure that you guys are up to snuff on where A.J. Brown is. Is he going to be playing? Is that knee healed up a little bit? Vic Beasley, after he's had an issue for the past two weeks, is he actually going to play? I can provide you that information right here, and I appreciate you guys for tuning in. And I cannot wait to see you guys and bring you guys more information. Keep the comments going. I like to respond to them, and I can discuss them throughout the episodes as we move forward. If you like this episode or any episodes in the past, Click that like button. If you're not subscribed, you're wrong. Subscribe to the channel and also click that notifications bell. Get notified whenever I upload tomorrow's episode as well as any other episodes in the future. But before you leave, got that question for you. Why tighten up tomorrow when you can tighten up today?